At just 19 years old, I landed my first contract that was over $100 an hour as a freelance CAD drafter in the field of land surveying. And today I'm going to show you how you can go from a $20 an hour drafter to over $100 an hour using simple strategies that you need to implement mindset wise, and then also actual real tangible things to implement in your business to help you transition from $20 an hour to over $100 an hour. My name is Jason Hunt. I'm a professional AutoCAD trainer. and I run the only land story drafting program in the world. And I also run a program that teaches AutoCAD drafters how to go freelance with the skills that they already know. And again, today, this video, I'm going to be talking about uh, the reasons why you're probably stuck at low pay as a freelance drafter and what you can do to increase your value and find clients that are much higher paying and much better to work with. Let's jump into this. So the number one reason why most freelancers get stuck at low pay is because they keep selling themselves on price and not on value. What do I mean by that? Well, um, I had a talk with a buddy the other day and uh, we were sitting out back on my back patio in front of the pool and we were discussing, you know, what is it that makes uh, a good clientele and what is it that makes a good freelancer? And for us, what it really was is problem solving. Um, you have to understand that when somebody has a specific problem in a specific area, right, they will spend large amounts of money to get that problem solved by someone who does specifically this. I actually have a, um, a software engineer who does development for me for my like sales backend and CRM. And um, for him, we were talking about specialty. He's working on this new uh, CRM that I'm trying to implement. And there's really not a lot of people who can do this. And, you know, he's a smart enough guy where he figures it out. And I was telling him, like, listen, man, uh, if you go online on like Upwork and Fiverr, which, by the way, I don't really recommend those, uh, those programs. But if you go online on those, uh, on those applications, you'll see people who are doing similar CRMs right? And they're charging thousands of dollars, right? For simple, basic setup between one integration to another, but it's because it's so specialized, right? Having someone that can just do it, that already knows the process and can just do it for you like quickly, right? That is very valuable for somebody. I'm looking at like potentially anywhere between three to $12,000 for something like that. And it wasn't even the software that I wanted. That's why I ended up hiring this guy. And so we ended up coming to this conclusion that, you know, realistically, if he understands this integration between this software, he should just advertise that. Okay. And then charge a lot of money for it because that service right there is a bundle to fix this specific problem is actually what garners attention. And what actually is able to get uh, paid highly on is because it is valuable. It's not his time anymore. You know, he's not on an hourly rate, right? He's going to be on a project basis. And this is exactly what you need to do because you need to get into a niche where you can figure out, Oh, okay. Right. I can do this one thing over and over again repeatedly, and then that's what you advertise, right? When I started my, my drafting company in surveying, that's already niche enough inside of surveying. But we were a drafting company in surveying specifically for residential drafting only. That's super specified. So imagine you are a, a licensed surveyor. You're sick and tired of doing your drafting work. And you come along Jason who says, yes, I specifically do exactly what you need, right? Are you more likely to pay more than if I just said, oh yeah, we can handle whatever you need, no problem, right? But instead of I say, I, only, I do exactly this, this is what we do. This is how you actually end up making more money is because you value your service and you have it more defined and you basically sell yourself as the premium uh, service, the only person that does specifically this thing. And yes, you can have many things that you say you specifically do, but when they come to you directly and you especially do your marketing side of things, this is how you should actually look is that I do this thing for this person specifically. Boom. Okay. And so that's really how you take it to the next level. But uh, what does a $20 an hour CAD drafter look like, right? Uh, this is you, you right now. You probably take any single job. You go on to uh, Upwork, Fiverr, Craigslist, you know, trying to, trying to get a job. You like hourly pricing. Um, and you take orders from your clients instead of positioning yourselves as the expert. The second that you are having to go to them and say, oh, please, Mr. May, I please have this project. Please, sir, may I please have some more? No, okay, don't do that. Uh, this is what's going to keep you down at that level, right? In order to elevate yourself, you have to get into a position where drafters are, or clients are coming to you instead, and you have this defined service that you are the go-to person for getting this one Thing done. You have to specialize. But with marketing, you can find a lot of people who need that specialization, which is good. That's how you make your money. So I hate to directly read off the PowerPoint, but I actually want to go through this thing right now to show you, uh, you know, why specialization works. Um, for starters, it eliminates the competition. Your clients are willing to pay more for the specialized skill and you get better clients. Again, everything I just stated in the last slide, but uh, really here are some examples of niches that you can increase your rates in. So for starters, I did land story drafting. It's a very niche field pays a lot because there's not a lot of drafters who know how to do it anyways. These companies can't even hire in person for starters. So uh, they're more than happy and uh, responsive to someone who's on a freelance basis. Um, telecom drafting. Oh my gosh, if you can do telecom electrical drafting, that's huge. Um, mechanical industrial drafting 
It really depends on the specialization, but if you get in some sort of weird manufacturing thing, like you're like, oh, I can do plastic injected molding for this specific uh, you know, type of injected molding thing, right? And you understand what actually goes through the entire process. So that's the thing, regardless of what it is that you're doing, right? Uh, in any one of these niches, it's not just doing the drafting. Oh yeah, I could draft this thing. No, no, you understand the entire process because you understand the industry. Because at the end of the day, right? I get people that come to me like, oh yeah, SolidWorks is better, Inventor is better. I'm like, shut the shut the fuck up, okay? I don't give a fuck what software you know. I make more money than you, all right? Not to be like cocky or anything like that, but really what it comes down to is they don't understand the industry, right? They don't understand the industry. The industry is how you make your money. It's not the software that you use, all right? It's the industry that you use it in. And so at the end of the day, if you can understand that entire process, you understand the pain of someone who operates that industry, the owner, right? What their issue is. If you can say, oh yes, Mr. Owner, I know exactly what you're having right now, what your difficulties are, because I have the exact solution for that because I've helped other people do this exact same thing. This is how you increase your rate, all right? Because becoming the person to solve that problem. And so this is how you're gonna get your 50 to $75 an hour so that you specialize into a more uh, niche field. You niche down, uh, you start turning down the low paying jobs, to be honest with you, um, and you rebrand your services and you build a portfolio by having people come to you, right? And I talk about that in uh, my other videos, which is you know how to get the market to come to you in reality. It's just impressions, it's just the eyeballs. We're in an attention economy. If you can get away with doing a little bit of content, right? Uh, running a little bit of ads, you know, people have been coming to you more than people than you can handle. Because uh, at the end of the day, you get a couple of good clients that are paying you really well, uh, you won't be able to keep up with the work. So, um, which is a good thing, it's a good problem to have. So at, the, at, this, at this stage, you're not just a CAD freelancer, you're a specialist inside of a niche. So do that first. So how do we go from that $75 an hour to that elusive ooh, $100 to $150 an hour, right? Um, it's all about selling the results, not the hours, okay? Um, so once you hit $75 an hour, you're gonna notice that uh, your clients don't really care about your hourly rates. They care about the results that you provide. And so this is where the value-based pricing is gonna come in. So you're gonna charge per a project basis, then per an hourly basis. This is how you make your money. When we did, uh, drafting for residential surveys for land serving. Again, we're already niche enough. I could charge a $50 or $75 hourly rate, but instead we did a project pay. That project pay pa calculated out was over $100 an hour, actually over $200 an hour. And the only reason we were able to do that is because with those projects, we get more efficient, our team gets better, we can get the projects done faster, we can deliver those results, and it's a flat rate. The thing is, on average, we saw that no matter what you do, you can charge three times more on average per project right? Then whatever your calculated hourly rate is, what do I mean with that? Let's say you thought the project was going to take you, you know, three hours, all right? And you charge $33 an hour. So let's just say a hundred bucks, okay? So at the end of the day, you're like, okay, this should cost me a hundred dollars if I'm on an hourly rate. Uh, that same project you could charge $300 for because when it's a fixed flat rate, the clients are comfortable paying that because now it's a fixed margin in their checkbook. They know how much it's going to cost for every single project. So their margins are very consistent. And at the same time, they know that you can't run up a, uh, a check on them, right? With an hourly timesheet where you could go over, you know, a certain amount of hours and you're charging them a ridiculous amount of hours. I've seen it firsthand. I've seen it firsthand where surveyors are charging ridiculous hours for something that really wasn't that, that big uh, because they can, and that makes the clients upset and the clients don't want to work with them anymore. And that's just what it is, you know, and that's, uh, that's how it is. But if you have a flat rate and you understand it and everyone's cool with each other, it works out really well. This is how you get higher than $100 an hour. Now, and again, in the beginning when I was talking about my $100 an hour uh, man hour rate, that was actually true. That was a $100 per man hour, not calculated, right? But like actually like timesheet wise, uh, which was nuts. Um, that was a job that we had done in, uh, in, in South Texas. Again, it was, I'm a remote drafter, but a job that we did in South Texas. There was a hurricane that came through in about 2017. And in 2019, FEMA had footed a bunch of money. They were like, oh, we got to get all these homes rebuilt or whatever. Survey company uh, did the bid right? For the, for the government, it's government money. Everyone makes crazy money at that point in time. You know how it is. Um, and with all that government money floating around, they're like, yeah, we can handle this project. They had all the field crew to get it done. They didn't have enough drafters. Okay. So when they found me, they're like, name your price. And I was like, I mean, I'm 19 at the time. And, uh, you know, I had like two guys working for me and I'm just like, uh, I don't know, a hundred. And they're like, oh yeah, sure. No problem. Fuck. I could ask for way more. So, but either way, no, everyone was very happy off of that. Uh, we made very good money. And, uh, and it was a cool project to work on. So anytime you have uh, industries like that or sort of like natural disasters, uh, unfortunately, what ends up happening is that people make really good money to rebuild stuff. Uh, I mean, good that everything gets rebuilt quickly, but that's just the nature of that. So if you ever find that, uh, you know, like a big one right now for surveying is the California wildfires, right? This is another sort of in that you can get inside the industry. So super niche, super niche, super niche, but then also project basis, same thing that kind of applies to here.
So the biggest transition that's going to take you over that $100 an hour mark is by becoming an authority inside of your field. So at this stage, you're not just a freelancer. You're like the expert in the industry. But how do we get there? How do we get from a point where you're just a normal drafter or even a good drafter? You'd be the best drafter in the world, right? But if someone actually runs circles around you with marketing and branding themselves, you will never be able to keep up, which is why you need to get on this treadmill now. And unfortunately, it's a recurring thing. But by publishing content, speaking at events, and networking with higher paying individuals, this is what's going to put you on top. And number one is going to be content for sure. Okay. And this is how you basically market yourself as the go-to person. It's literally what I did myself. Okay. And so as long as you can understand that I'm good at this skill set, great. I'm now going to show myself as the person to do this online. You have no competition okay? because you're already in such one of these niche uh, specific fields, right? Unlike, unlike, uh, you know, other fields that may be very saturated with uh, social media. When you do this on a technical aspect, you have clients that number one already need the work done. And so now when they find someone that they know, they like, they trust, right? You put yourself behind your content and you give value inside of your content uh, that actually showcases your skills. It's, it's super easy. That's how you have people that come to you and literally say, oh, hey, I need this done. Uh, you know, what, what, what's, how much is it, right? And you give them a number and they say, all right, here's the check. No problem, okay? Obviously, there's a bit of uh, back and forth from there um, when it comes to the sales part of things. But to get people coming to you instead of you having to go to them, number one is going to be publishing content inside of your niche. So you might be asking yourself, how am I going to take my skills that I have right now and level up to that $100, $150 an hour by garnering clients that pay me more? And if you're curious, I have an entire program where we literally teach you how to implement all the strategies I talked about today, plus more when it comes to client acquisition and sales. And it's no bullshit. It's literally this step-by-step -step implementation. Do this, do this, then do this, then do this, right? With a full roadmap and live training every single week by me. And so if that's something that interests you, I want you to go ahead and click the video that's in the description and watch that. And there's also a booking link at the bottom of that video to book in for a call with me to inquire about that program. So if you're serious about getting your skill set to the next level when it comes to freelance CAD drafting, go ahead and click on that link and go from there. And if you enjoyed this video and you have any more questions, just go ahead and shoot me a message on Instagram and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thank you for watching and I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one.